All right, so Windows Server 2019 was a little bit tricky. Had to go in and um, actually remove the virtual machine and uh, do the setup a little bit differently than our other ones to get it running on VMware Player. So let me show you the changes that I made so that you don't have to go through the, the, high, the 20 minutes of work that I just went through. All right, so first things first. Again, if you've made that virtual machine already, go ahead and just delete it. You didn't have anything set up on it anyway, so shouldn't be that big a deal. Get rid of that. You're gonna start that process of creating a new virtual machine all over again. You're gonna say create a new VM. This time, instead of choosing the ISO right off the bat, what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, I will install the operating system later. This option will give us some additional, uh, some diff this, option was to give us some additional items to choose from when we set up our uh, when setting up the VM so we'll hit next then you'll see you have some options to either install a, a Microsoft guest operating system Linux or other we're gonna say Microsoft Windows and we're gonna choose from that list Windows Server 2019 notice it doesn't have any like special core or anything like that that is what was tripping us were tripping me up earlier it was trying to install just the core version of the operating system we want to install the desktop um, experience version so in order to get to that we need to just install a, a blanket windows server 2019 machine we'll hit next we'll give it our our specific name here so i'm gonna say w sanders dash windows server 2019 I'm gonna put two here because I have one already set up locked and loaded next here we're gonna do something different as well instead of having uh, splitting a disk into multiple files we're gonna store everything on one virtual file one uh, virtual disk as that single file so we'll choose that option and we'll hit next and then here's our summary I'm gonna adjust the hardware a little bit give it a little more power four gigs of ram and four virtual cpus and then i'm going to finish so what that's going to do is going to create a blank virtual machine so now that we have this blank virtual machine set up we can't really launch it yet but we can go in and now point it to the um iso file that we want to use so i'm going to hit edit virtual machine settings i'm going to go to CD slash DVD SAT is set to auto detect right now, but we want to switch it to ISO image file. We'll click that option, hit browse, and then I'm going to browse that ISO file, that um, ISO folder that I had, and find that Windows Server 2019 ISO. And hit open, and then OK. now that i have it have this virtual machine pointed to the right iso file i can hit play virtual machine as soon as you hit play make sure to double click into the actual vm window that way it'll recognize your keyboard and you can hit enter to uh start that boot process off let Windows do its uh, pre-boot process and then after a while we should see a screen similar to what we saw with Windows 10 when we had when we are able to choose the language for our keyboard and the language and currency settings for the system All right, so this is that screen, Windows Server 2019, our language, time, currency, and keyboard layout. We'll go ahead and hit next. All 
I get that install button so I can click on that to kick off the installation Now we're going to choose Windows Server 2019 standard evaluation with desktop experience. The other standard version is, is the CLI version only. It only has command line. We want to be able to see the GUI for our purposes because we will be logging directly into the system. So I'm choosing desktop experience and we're clicking on next. Now the issue that... Um, I ran into before is when we got to that step it was prompting for a uh, license key which you shouldn't need in trial mode so by redoing the way that that VM was set up was able to get past that step that was requiring a license key and I was able to get to this uh, now able to get to this uh, in user license agreement and then we can move on there and this part should look familiar just like what we saw in Windows 10 so we're going to do the custom install there's our unallocated space. We'll hit new and we'll take up the whole space. And it's going to create those additional partitions for boot features, but that's and that's totally fine. The majority of the space will still be set aside for the primary operating system.
Hmm. All right, sorry about that. So now I will choose the primary partition. And we will let Windows unpack its files. This will take a little while, so I'm going to pause here. All right, so after about 15 minutes, installation seems to be done, or at least the portion that uh, of that automated part. And now we have to set up our, our administrator account. Again, every operating system is going to need at least one so that you can do configuration changes. It's already going to be set to the default, which is that built-in administrator account. I just need to give it a password. So let's do that. Super secret password. And once I get that password in there, assuming it matches, I can hit finish. Oh, doesn't match. How about that? And now let's try that again. Finish. All right. Finalizing my setup. And now I have a screen that looks suspiciously like Windows 10. But once we get in, you'll notice that it's going to have some pretty, a few pretty uh, features that are pretty obviously not just for a standard uh, desktop or laptop machine. All right. All right, we are now in our server. We got our desktop. And typically when a server launches, the first thing that opens up, or at least a Windows server, the first thing that opens up is, is the server manager. It's also trying to connect my network. I'm going to go ahead and allow that. And this server manager, just a kind of a FYI, we'll be getting into this more later on, but the server manager is going to be like your go-to portal to find tools for managing this particular server and other devices that communicate or that are being managed by that this server or vice versa. The server is providing services to them. <clears throat> All right, so that's my server manager loading up, checking everything out. When these go are red, these are server rows here. When they're red, that means something needs to be looked at. When they're green, that means you're good to go. All right, and we'll take a deeper dive into that later. But now our Windows Server 2019 system is up and running. Last up, we got our Ubuntu server. So we'll take a look at that. 